after yesterday's talk the union of overflowing beings there is a question the question relates to the second type of the man which is emotional type the person says that she is an emotional type and that it has intensified recently specifically after the delivery of the baby she has tried to work on it but with no real results what should she do to overcome the domination of emotions emotions are very important but we have to understand what kind of emotion what is the nature of emotion anger is emotion possessiveness is emotion hatred is emotion these come in the category of negative emotions then there is positive emotions the same thing when it is directed upwards it becomes a positive emotions remember it is important to know what kind of emotion we are in particular dealing with because the methodology although there is one common thing for all these emotions yet still each individual emotion has to be handled slightly different but i did not go into inquiring the nature of emotions because i thought it will be relevant for me to speak of emotions in general you have to understand where this word emotion comes from if you analyze this comes from e motion motion means movement e means something is there which you are not seeing just like your email email is there but nobody is seeing only you can see it and that too through a specific mechanism through internet through your laptop through your internet connection so too is the nature of emotions when i received the question the first thing came to my mind the word emotion comes from two words e motion motion means movements emotion cannot be permanent that is why these are called emotions have you ever meditated from where the word emotion comes from the word emotion comes from the root motion meaning movement they move hence they are emotions and they are invisible to human eye that is why it is emotion just like emails e books from one to another one emotion to another you continuously change one moment you are sad and the next moment you are happy this moment you are angry and that moment you are very compassionate you are angry with this person and loving to someone else this moment you are loving another moment you are full of hatred and the morning was beautiful and evening is ugly this goes on like this both thinking and feeling are the barriers in the manifestation of truth emotions are not true they big cloud the manifestation of truth whether it is thinking or feeling emotions are part of feelings when you think you cannot see reality as it is because your thinking becomes a barrier and then colors the reality so to when you feel then too you cannot see the reality as it is because your eyes are full of tears and your heart is full of emotions that is what feeling is when thinking and feeling both disappear and you enter the realm of the being only then you establish connection with truth only then you can overcome emotions that is the part of feelings and thinking too nature has not made any distinction there are tear glands in male eyes as they are in female eyes tears are needed tears do miracle but repressing the tears is a subtle strategy to repress emotions tears are deep down connected with the heart heads do not cry only hearts do representing the tear is a subtle trick 
repressing tears is a subtle trick to repress the hearts and emotions however people are really schizophrenic they cannot laugh and if you cannot laugh how can you be because laughing and crying goes together excessive laughing leads to crying and excessive crying leads to laughter how can you cry both become impossible when laughter and crying are impossible your heart is completely closed you do not have any emotions instead you start living only in the head your whole reality consists of thoughts remember thoughts are dry they cannot bring laughter they can also not bring tears tears and laughter both come from heart and clarity is not of the mind clarity comes from the heart heart is the seat of truth confusion is the way of the mind to experience truth you have to be aware of your emotional energy and its direction when the direction is downwards it becomes destructive on the contrary when the direction changes and upward movement begins transcendence happens the direction of emotive energy changes this is the entire process of transformation how to change the direction of emotive energy science is confined to head reason and logic heart is confined to feeling emotions and sensitiveness but the being is beyond both it is pure silence no thinking no feeling emotions arise when we overlook the head and move to the dimension of heart but truth can only manifest when head and heart are in harmony with one another and there is something that bridges the two what bridges the head and heart is your awareness it is the being is beyond both it is pure silence no thinking no feeling and only the man who knows his being is authentically religious not the one who holds his scriptures under the arm or in the hand and walks down to the church the only man who knows his being is authentically religious the heart is only a stop over the heart is also a mechanism just like head is a mechanism however it differs from the head you can call head the logical instrument and you can call heart the emotional instrument out of head all philosophies and theologies emerge out of heart comes out all kinds of devotion prayer sentimentality as upward movement of the emotive energy but the heart also goes round and round and round in emotions the word emotion is good watch with awareness it consists of motion movement so the heart moves but the heart is blind it moves fast and quick because there is no reason to wait it does not have to think so it jumps into anything but truth is not to be found by any emotionality emotions is as much a barrier as logic awareness is the way it means you are becoming aware of who you are becoming alert that i am a witness of all that is happening both within and without i am a witness of my inner world a witness of my thoughts and a witness of my emotions basically you are only a witness a mirror that reflects everything but remains uncontaminated by the reflections that it creates just as a mirror gathers no experiences and its very nature is innocence so too this is your essential nature to know this is awakening and awakening is the way to overcome the raging 
emotions, the rush of emotive energy, then life has a totally different texture, a totally different taste. Then it has the taste of Tao. Then it has the texture of the divine and the fragrance of immortality. Now where do emotions exist? The third center which is Manipur center, the center of fire which is your Hara or the navel center is the center of all your sentiments, emotions, etc. When the energy gets stuck at the center, the movement becomes impossible. There is emotional disturbance and imbalance. It has nothing to do with the other as you have been constantly told that this man makes me angry, his actions are not moral and things like that. The emotional disturbance has nothing to do with the other as you have been told constantly and you believe. Certainly it is your problem because you are unconscious. We go on repressing our emotions in Manipur center. It means the diamond. Life is valuable because of sentiments, emotions, laughter, crying, tears and smiles. Life is valuable because of all these things. These are the glory of life. Hence the chakra is called Manipur, the diamond chakra. It is very essential how to free itself of the negation. Sufis call these are lower emotions. Nafs. When the emotive energy moves downward as conditioned by your so-called life that everybody else is responsible for your problems in life, your husband, your wife, your neighbor, your children, they are responsible for your problems. Remember, you cannot be called religious. Crying and weeping is a natural way, a safety wall that allows accumulated emotions, sadness to be thrown out of the system. It is a deep cleansing. Every man and every woman should learn how to cry perfectly and how to enjoy the crying. Sufi Raghuvar Dayal introduced laughter and crying as meditation. Crying has to become meditation. Not that when you are emotionally hurt you cry. This is negative expression of emotive energy. When you consciously, knowingly, full of awareness cry and make it a meditation and enjoy it, then it can become the way to transformation. It can help you to transform. Let your crying become your joy and celebration. So too, let your laughter be a celebration. Not that you are laughing at a joke. That is not the laughter. That is not therapeutic. When your laughter becomes your joy and you are laughing for no reason, then you are hammering your Manipur center, the navel chakra and the energy is released. It is such an unburdening and refreshing process. With this not only your eyes become fresh, when tears have flowed, your whole being becomes pure, simple and innocent once again. You attain again to a virginity that belonged once to you but is lost along life's roots. You again become uncorrupted. After a good crying and weeping, you feel as if you have taken an internal bath. The very soul has taken a shower. You are once again ready and younger too. Love is emotional. Trust is intuitive. Love can be positive and negative both. Release from Manipur Chakra, when it reaches the heart center, it becomes the transforming energy. Emotions go on changing every moment. They are in a flux. You cannot rely upon them, but trust can become a great foundation. Love helps you to reach to the place where trust is possible. Love helps you to reach to the place where trust is possible. Without love, trust is impossible. 
Love is almost like a bridge which can collapse any moment, but still it is a bridge. And when love collapses, it is the downward movement of the emotive energy. If you use the bridge, it can take you to trust. Remember, without it, you cannot reach to trust directly. So love is a necessity, but love unto itself is not enough. It's uses as a means and the end is trust. If love does not lead to trust, it is not love. It has not yet begun the transcendence. It is more or less can be called lust. Love always leads to trust, not otherwise. If you have not developed trust, that means love is not born in you as yet. Real life starts only when you start feeling, but feeling looks like madness to the head. Head represses feelings, emotions and sentiments, and they are the real essence of life. Through them, one comes closer to God, only through them. God is not a concept, but the utmost orgasmic experience of love. When one can feel one with the whole existence, that experience is God. It is making love to the whole. It is being loved by the whole. It is a love experience. That is why Jesus said God is love. And literally so. It is not a metaphor. Religion is a matter of love, not a question of thinking. It has nothing to do with logic, reasoning and the head, nothing at all. But it has all to do with the heart, but it has all to do with the heart, with feelings, with emotions and with love. Religion is closer to poetry than to mathematics. Poetry has something of the religious in it. Mathematics has none. And unless one is a lover, one will never know. The knowing comes through loving. Knowing comes through loving. Once love is purified and it is no more passion, it becomes compassion. So between two opposite moods, two opposite emotions, two opposite tendencies, there is always a point which transcends both. There is always a point between the two which transcends both. It is exactly in the middle and the beyond and beyond too. Through meditation you capture this moment. This is witness. Witness is neither the mind nor the heart. Mind is a division which thinks and heart is another division of the same mind which feels. Feeling and thinking, thoughts and emotions all belong to the domain of the known. But witnessing is separate from both. In witnessing you are attached to neither. Whether you are thinking, the watcher watches. A thought is passing by or you are feeling angry, the witness still watches. An emotion is passing by, just like clouds passed and you see them. You are neither good nor bad. You are neither the pleasant nor the unpleasant. You are neither the thought nor the emotions. You are neither the mind nor the heart. Drop all this. Whatever you are, whosoever you are, God has accepted you. When God has accepted you, then why worry? Accept yourself. Start living your life not through concepts, instead through your feelings and emotions and your body. Start living life as if you were never corrupted by any society, as if you have just come new into the world directly from God's hand and nobody has taught you anything. 
start living that life is the real life. Then you listen to your own heart, you listen to your body, do not repress, you try to understand and through understanding transformation becomes possible. From time to time unconscious emotions, anger, fear, hate, jealousy, greed, lust, cowardice, possessiveness, etc. run your life or it might be more appropriate to say that they ruin your life. All emotions and thoughts that do not arise the, from the integrated center are unconscious because they take possession of us often for no rational reason and with a strength that is out of proportion. This is an expression of emotions too. Someone is passing quietly on the road, a dog is walking on the street with the tails between legs, but the other dogs that are tied to their chains or within their compound cannot tolerate this. So they express their emotions. All emotions and thoughts that do not arise from the integrated center are unconscious because they take possession of us often for no rational reason. And most of the time these emotions take possession of you for no rational reason or with a strength that is out of proportion to the situation that provoked them. A simple situation and you see the type of emotions arise as if you have opened a Pandora's box. That is what happens on a day-to-day -day basis, day-to-day -day life, every day. You can see this happening between husband and wives, to friends, in the office between employee and employee. A simple situation that could be corrected in a sentence becomes an ugly brawl. All emotions and thoughts that do not arise from the integrated center are unconscious because they take possession of us and for no rational reason and with a strength that is out of proportion to the situation that provoked them and they eat away and they eat away all your energy in the night they become nightmares and in the day they affect your actions and they eat away all your energy in the night they become nightmares that's why when people are emotionally disturbed, they cannot fall asleep in the night because of these nightmares. The emotional energy becomes nightmares and in the, way, in the day, they affect your actions. The only way to know how to deal with these unwanted emotions is by repression or expression. This is what you have been told. So you either repress or express. With repression, the emotions, for example, your anger that is there, that is flooding your body, but you are trying not to be angry. With repression, the emotion, for example, anger is there, flooding your body, but you are trying not to be angry. You control it and in doing so, you control it and in doing so, it does, does not just go away, it simply goes into the unconscious where it accumulates as a poison. That is why in the moments when there is a simple situation that opens up the Pandora's box that opens up 
the layers of unconscious accumulated energy the more you do this the more poisoned you become but we go on repressing our energy it is not healthy and eventually it drives us neurotic and you know that at any moment the accumulative energy can explode and then it is uncontrollable and when it explodes it becomes uncontrollable you can see this happening every day this is one way that you have been taught with repression you hurt yourself you may get stomach ulcers and worse and then you feel you are sitting on top of a volcano so you are never at ease you are restless and all joy disappears from your life remember if you repress the energy of anger you become incapable of expressing anything else either because everything is joined together within there is no watertight compartment between anger and love then your love becomes an expression of anger alone it is not that you can repress anger and express love it cannot happen remember there are no watertight compartments between anger and love within it is not that you can repress anger and express love in that case your love will be false because it would not have any heat or the quality of warmth it will just be a mild mannerism and you will always be afraid of moving deeper into it all the repressed energies may arise all of a sudden and you all know that there is another alternative that is expression and what does expression by expression you understand dumping all these emotions onto someone else on something else this too does not help as well in fact it is even more destructive perpetuating a vicious cycle that can destroy relationship as well as our as well as your health and the more you express these emotions the more difficult it is not to do it it becomes a habit a second nature any situation comes in you have to direct it towards that person someone else is having a problem immediately you come back to your own problems and expresses in myriad ways it brings great mystery to us and to others and to no point it creates ugly situations in life which you have to pay for and on top of that you feel guilty that you, you should not be angry out of the fear of expression we repress but neither expression nor repression is good emotions are energies and unconscious emotions all unconscious energies can be transformed by the alchemy of awareness into their opposites remember emotions are energies and unconscious emotions all unconscious energies can be transformed by the alchemy of awareness into their opposites positive values for example fear can become love but you perpetuate fear you lock up your doors because of fear of somebody can attack you but remember no matter how much you protect death finds its own way you may be sitting down in a close closet but death cannot be escaped it comes when it is to come no matter how much protection you have done but this is what how we have been taught to live 
For example, fear can become love, anger can become compassion, hatred can become friendliness, lust can become creativity. It is the same energy transformed through understanding. So the meditative way is not a question of trying to discard these unconscious energies, instead accepting them and using them. They are part of you. It is your latent energy. So to try and reject them is like fighting a part of yourself. You are neither identified with the mind, you are either identified with the mind or remain fighting with the mind. These are the two ways that we have learned. When you are identified, you will indulge in anger, in sex, in greed and in jealousy. If you are fighting, then you will create anti-attitudes. Then you will be divided because fighting is simply one part of the mind fighting with another part. So it cannot lead to transformation. On the contrary, you will become a madhouse fighting with yourself, neurotic. Take revenge upon yourself, yielding to yourself, being defeated by yourself. Fighting is a kind of cooperation. It gives more power and a reality to whatever you are fighting with. Instead accept that the energy is there and try to understand the mechanism behind it. If you can really see and understand the whole mechanism, it will authentically transform into an energy that you can use positively and consciously in many creative ventures in your life. For example, if you accept anger and use this energy creatively, it releases a great vitality and passion in you. Then you are not standing back from life. Afraid, to, afraid you might explode, instead you can enjoy being in the thick of things, involved in the whole rich dance of life, rejecting anger, recoiling from your own energy, you are rejecting the possibility of being vital. You will be dull. Similarly, if you reject sadness, you will not have any depth. Your laughter will be shallow as you can see. The most of the laughter is simply very shallow and on the surface. It is not therapeutic. therapeutic. When you reject part of yourself, because these do not fit with some ideals that you have created or that ideals you have been given, they do not fit with the image that you have created for yourself or you have created for your spouse, then you become afraid of life. When you do not reject anything, all energies are yours and you are enriched tremendously. You have transformed all life negative energies alchemically into creative energies then you have tremendous energy and that tremendous energy is delight. How does it work? There are two steps, acceptance and awareness. If you really accept that in this moment anger is there or sadness is there and this is my energy, then a relaxation happens is not that the anger is coming because of somebody else. Someone else has given you an opportunity to see the dark cave of your life. Sadness has given you the opportunity to look deep within you. And the moment you realize that it is your own energy, then a relaxation happens. The fight stops. And in that relaxation, awareness of the mechanism of unconsciousness is possible. Remember, in that relaxation, awareness of the mechanism of unconscious is possible. Awareness of the mechanism. That you can become aware that 
this is the mechanism of unconsciousness. This awareness automatically transforms because knowing you cannot be angry, knowing you cannot be greedy. For anger, greed and violence, unawareness is a basic requirement. For anger, greed, violence, possessiveness, or all kind of negative emotions, unawareness is the basic requirement. Just as you cannot knowingly take poison, just as knowingly you cannot put your hand into flame, so too you cannot knowingly be angry once you are aware of what it does to you. Remember this as your sutra or the psalm or whatever you may call. You cannot take poison knowingly. Just as knowingly you cannot put your hand into flame, so too you cannot knowingly be angry. Once you are aware of what it does to you, the vital key to acceptance for this purpose is that you have no condemnation, no rejection of whatsoever emotion is there. Whatsoever emotion, anger, lust, greed, frustration, sadness, possessiveness, there is no condemnation of that. Also, you have no interpretation of whether it is good or bad, whether it comes from your spouse or any circumstance and situation. Nothing is important. What is important? You simply acknowledge and accept whatever is there in that moment. What is really important is that you are simply acknowledging and accepting whatever is there in that moment. Whether it is anger, whether it is lust or greed or frustration or sadness or possessiveness. This is not as easy as it sounds. To see and acknowledge what it is without judging or commenting on it is indeed difficult. It is only possible through meditation. It is not possible for the mind to be without judgment and comments, just try and watch your mind for five minutes. But meditation gives you the possibility to access dimensions of yourself which are beyond your mind. Dimensions in which you can really see facts and awareness. You can see the facts, the situations with awareness, without judging. Remember, meditation gives you a possibility to access dimensions of yourself which are beyond your mind, dimensions in which you can really see facts with awareness without judging. Meditation gives you the possibility to watch the workings of the unconscious within you. Meditation gives you the possibility to watch the workings of the unconscious within you objectively. It gives you the possibility to understand your unconscious energy, how they work, what are their functions. If you can really watch all the ways of the mind, greed, desire, ambition, jealousy, possessiveness, domination, hate, one day suddenly you will find they are not there. The power was in being unconscious. Their power was in being unconscious. They have no other re reality. So as soon as you shine the light of awareness on them, they disappear as if the moment sun has risen and the girdle of darkness vanishes. Meditation is needed because normally you are afraid to look at your own reality. And you are afraid that if you to face about yourself, all your opinions about yourself will fall down. There is yet another important point to remember. Acceptance does not mean resignation. For example, anger is there. What I what can I do about it? Acceptance means only that you accept the fact as it is. 
see that anger is there acknowledge it be aware that they, that is happening watch it it is a beautiful phenomenon energy moving in you becoming hot bubbling boiling and sizzling it is just like electricity in the clouds primitive people used to be afraid of lighting then science learned how to transform that energy into energy that runs your air conditioner the fridge and all that you need the electricity of lightning has become a domestic force this is what michael faraday did the he was fighting the kite when there was lightning and he felt the current of lightning at the other end where he was holding the string of the kite it is no longer angry and no longer threatening through science and outer force has been transformed into friend so to through meditation the same happens with inner force anger is just like inner electricity in your body it is electricity because you become hot and when it is transformed a deep coolness happens electricity is hot it becomes a source of air conditioning then outside it is hot whereas inside it is cool and comfortable anger is hot it becomes a source of compassion compassion is an inner air conditioning suddenly everything is cool and beautiful and nothing can disturb you and the whole existence is transformed into a friend into friendliness when you look through the eyes of anger somebody becomes an enemy and when you look through the eyes of compassion everybody is friend and everything friendly when you love everywhere is heaven and when you hate everywhere is hell it is your own standpoint which is projected on to reality so the moment you understand your anger you can channel it and it will become your servant when anger takes possession of you what to do get yourself into your room and look at the anger where it is what it what it is where it has taken hold of your being allow the energy to be there boiling and bubbling never suppress it in any way just watch where all the flames of anger burn within the unconscious within the consciousness never suppress it in any way just watch where all the flames of anger burn within the consciousness watch your face get red feel the anger in your hands and jaw too and go on watching it do not support the anger by going into the reason why you are angry do not project it onto the other or anyone else and do not focus on a cause outside that the outside is the cause just focus on your own energy within and you will be surprised the more you observe anger and fainter it will become the more conscious you become of anger and sooner it will evaporate then a moment will come when it will disappear completely and what remains within is peace silence and tranquility like after a storm this is the creative use of negative emotions through observation through meditativeness you can transform the negative emotions into creative ones anger depends on your cooperation in watching the cooperation is broken anger takes hold of you in your moments of unconsciousness and in watching 
you are bringing light into the dark caves where anger can perpetuate in watching the cooperation is broken you are no more supporting it it will be there for a few moments for a few minutes and then it will start disappearing because it is not getting cooperation finding no roots in you finding you unavailable to cooperate in it it will dissipate so awareness is the second step first is acceptance then awareness and you can be aware only if you accept totally whatever is there if not you will try to avoid it in subtle ways you will think of something else that is what we try to convey we try to avoid that you are angry you will pretend that it is not there you will create a a face it or you will try to justify it that is a dead end if you do not accept that it is your anger not somebody else anger your energy you are responsible because there is a leakage in you in your wiring in your inner wiring that's why you are getting the shock and anger is a shock just as when the electric current that is running through the invis to through the wires has a leakage you get a shock this is like anger you have to correct that leakage that is dead if you do not accept that it is your energy if you do not accept your anger as your energy then you cannot be aware of it accepting anger means anger is not an act rather you are the source accepting this means throwing away your self image and we have all built beautiful self images so this is the first step and the most difficult to accept whatever you are to accept whatever is there in the moment as a natural fact without any condemnation that the anger that is arising in you at this moment is your own energy but if you can accept it then you can watch it and watching means neither you are against it nor for it it means you do not cooperate with it watching means you are not cooperating with it and in that moment anger becomes compassion if you can wait a little the same energy becomes compassion just patience is needed a few more things are needed to understand one is about the root cause of anger anything that comes as an obstruction to your desire creates anger you cannot drop anger unless desire disappears because you remember there is a root cause of anger and one the root cause of anger is anything that comes as an obstruction to your desire creates anger remember this as the sutra anything that comes as an obstruction to your desire creates anger you cannot drop anger unless desire disappears people want to drop anger and they do not understand that they are wanting to drop a symptom anger is a symptom anger is only a symptom it simply shows that somewhere your desire has been obstructed something is coming between you and your desire and the object of your desire hence there is anger anger means i will destroy the obstruction that comes in the way of my desire i want to acquire this thing and something obstructs it anger comes in and another thing never take any action in mood when the negative emotion is possessing you you just wait i have with incident in kyoto in japan i was walking on the street suddenly a man was hit by a car what would you do in that situation you will start expressing your anger 
towards the car driver. Instead, the man got up. He started breathing deeply. He went to the driver, thanked him and walked away. Which is this? Can you do this? No. What he did? A situation has come when anger may arise in the person. He took deep breath or the fire breath, got up, took the fire breath, approached the driver of the car, thanked him for creating this opportunity to see, to be a witness when the energy that could have become anger transformed into compassion. He has to be full of gratitude towards that person and he walked away, walked his way. Never take any action in the mood when negative emotion is possessing you. Wait. This is what Gurjiev was told when he was nine years of age. His father said, when anger is taking possession of you, postpone it for 24 hours. Just wait. You do not act when anger is uppermost. Otherwise, you will repent and you will create a chain of reactions to which there will be no end. Negativity provokes more negativity. Anger brings more anger. And hostility brings more hostility. Wait. When you are angry, this is the moment to meditate. As the man in, on the street in Kyoto did. It was the moment to meditate. Do not waste this moment. Anger is creating such great energy in you. It can destroy you. But energy is neutral. The same energy that can destroy can be creative. This is not repression. I am not saying to repress the negative. Instead, I am saying watch the negative. There is a vast difference between repression and watching. There is a tremendous difference between the two. It is not about sitting on top of the negative, ignoring the negative or doing something against it. It is not that when you are angry, you should smile. No, I am not saying that. That smile will be false and ugly, but you are told to do that and naturally you are doing. The anger is boiling within, but yet still out of courtesy, you are smiling, a false smile. Instead, close the door and be with your anger. There is no need to show it to anybody else. It is your private affair. It is your energy and your life too. Keep looking. You will see that anger cannot be there forever. Try it. If you do not do anything, what will happen? Can anger hang there forever and ever? Nothing hangs forever. Happiness comes and goes. Unhappiness comes and goes. Everything changes. Nothing remains permanent. This is the very nature of emotions, that which is constantly in movement, constantly in motion. Today you have learned a new definition of emotion. That which is constantly moving is emotion. Anger has come, it will be going. Just watch and wait. Let anger be there, but wait and watch. Do not repress or act according to anger. And soon you will see that your, your face is becoming softer. Do not repress or act according to anger in the moment when anger has taken possession of you. And soon you will see that your face is becoming softer, your eyes are becoming calmer and energy is changing. Do not force the change. Wait for it to come on its own. This is the secret. This is learning to transform your poisons into nectar. This is how Meera transform the poison into nectar. That is what the ancients call it, transforming your poisons into nectar. If you can change your greed, your anger, your fear, your lust, your possessiveness, the poisons with awareness, they transform into nectar. 
The same thing that was your disease becomes your health. The same thing that was your bondage becomes your freedom. All that is needed is to bring awareness into the dark parts of your being. Never express your negative emotions publicly. But this is what we have been taught. The moment anger takes possession of you, you express it publicly and wash your dirty linens in public. That is how things become distorted. Now, if you are feeling angry with someone, you start expressing your anger. Remember, the other is not going to be a Gautam Buddha and sit silently. He is not a marble statue. He will also do something. You will express anger. He will express his anger as well in response. And what will happen? This will create more anger in you and anger and violence create from the other side the same and will be a vengeance and then you will feel like being more into it because you have been told to express when you are feeling angry go to your room close off the room beat the pillow stand in before the mirror shout at your image Say things that you have never said to anyone and always wanted to say, but it has to be a private phenomenon, a private affair. Otherwise, there is no end and you will fall into the vicious circle. Things go on moving in circles and we want to end them. So the moment you feel any negative emotion about anybody, that other person is not in question. Remember, the other person is not responsible what goes on in you. The question is that when a virus takes possession of you, is virus responsible for it? Is your immune system is responsible for it? Your immune system is so unconscious and so weak that anything takes possession of you. So too, anger is like a virus that takes position of you in the moments of unconsciousness. Greed, frustration, sadness, all these are like virus that takes position of you when you are. They are like viruses that take position of you when your immune system, the inner immune system is weak. That means there is unconsciousness. There is no meditative energy. There is no awakening in you. That's why anger takes position of you. That's why greed takes position of you. That's why lust takes position of you. That's why sadness takes position of you. Let your inner immune system be strong enough. Let there be awareness. So the moment you feel any negative emotion about anybody, that other person is not in question, is not responsible. A virus has taken position of you because of your unconsciousness. The question is that you have certain energy of anger. Now that energy has to be diffused into the universe. You are not to repress it within yourself. When you express your negative emotions privately in your aloneness, it is a meditation, not a fight. If you are feeling sad, sit in your room and feel as if you are being possessed by sadness as you can. It cannot harm, but really be sad, but be really sad and see how long you can stay sad. How long sadness can stay? Nothing stays forever. Have you ever watched how long you can remain sad? Maybe a few moments. Soon it will be passing away. But it does not require your cooperation. It requires awareness in you. If you feel like crying, cry but in your privacy. These things have nothing to do with others. If you think that your anger is caused by the other, your sadness is caused by the other, then you are on a wrong track. And in Trinidad language we have a slang says crapo smoke your pipe means you have no solution you have finished you are finished these things have nothing to do with others 
everything is your problem why make it public and that way it is not going to be help but on the contrary it will increase so every day before going to sleep for one hour at night sit on your bed and do all kind of crazy things that you wanted to do that people do when they are angry remember when you are angry what you do remember what you do when you are violent and destructive you do many crazy things that you would have not done otherwise so do this consciously and it does not mean that you have to be destructive to very valuable things just take a piece of paper and tear it it into small bits of paper and throw them all over and you know the story and that will do destroy everything it can be valueless but everything has to be done in your privacy when you come out you come refreshed if you want to do something in public then do something different and i'll tell you what you can do you can go to the person you were angry with you were feeling that this person is the cause of your anger go to him after you have done what you were told to do in your privacy go to that person and tell him i have been in private angry with you i shouted at you i abused you i said ugly things to you please forgive me but it was all done in privacy because it was my problem it has nothing to do with you but in certain way it was directed at you and you are not aware of it hence an apology is needed this has to be done public that will help people to help each other and that person will not be angry instead he will say there is no need for any apology you have not done anything to me if you are feeling clean it is a, it was a good exercise but in public never bring your negativities and ugliness otherwise you are creating bigger problems in trying to solve the small ones be really very careful everything negative has to be released in private in your aloneness and if you want to make any public statement about it because everybody because somebody may have been in your mind with whom you were hateful whom you killed while you were tearing the papers go to him and humbly ask for his forgiveness people wash dirty linens in public however the meditative insight does not allow you to wash your dirty linen in public places there is no need why unnecessary involve other people why unnecessary create an image of yourself as ugly i am reminded of a very strange story there was a great conference a world conference of psychologists and psychoanalysts and therapists and all other schools treating human mind one great psychoanalyst was reading a paper but he could not read it because his attention was continually distracted by a young female psychoanalyst who was sitting in front row and an old ugly fellow who was continuously playing with her breasts and she was not bothered at all imagine a situation a young woman sitting in the front row next to an ugly old man who is playing with his breast and this woman this lady is not bothered at all this man could not read his paper he tried to hide that woman and that old ugly man behind the paper but he would forget which line he was reading and got so messed up that he had finally say that it is impossible the conference could not understand what is impossible and why he is behaving in such a way he has never been so before he is very systematic thinker and today he is talking nonsense he reads half a line 
and then another which has no connection with it and then another page comes in it and now he is saying it is all messed up and I cannot continue. And he could not look at the woman who was sitting just in front. Somebody stood up and inquired what is the matter? Why are you making fool of yourself? And he said, I am not making fool of myself. This young lady is not doing anything and that old ugly fellow is playing with her breasts. And the young lady said, but that is not your problem. You should read your paper. Even I am not taking it as my problem. It is the problem of that old ugly man. Why should I be bothered? He has a repressed sexuality. Perhaps he could not get his mother's breasts for long enough and he is, is still at this age even though he may be 80 and he is not doing any harm to me. It is not my problem. So why should I stop him? And it is not your problem. Why should you get disturbed? It is simply his problem. But many times this is what happens. Somebody else is doing something and you are taken possession of that situation. In fact, the lady said that he, you should be get psychoanalyzed. And he himself was a great psychoanalyst. In fact, he is my teacher. And that is not my problem, said the woman. Why should I stop him? And it is not your problem either. Why should you get disturbed? It is not simply his problem. He should get psychoanalyzed, analyzed. And he himself is a great psychoanalyst. And in fact, my teacher. But what the woman said, what he is doing is not my problem. Needs a very integrated center, integrated being. It is a clear-cut vision that even though he is doing something with her, the problem is his, not her. One makes you angry. This is what we say. It is not my problem. Instead, it is your problem. Why should I be bothered about your problem? She continued, Why should I get disturbed? The poor fellow is suffering from his childhood disease, it seems. She continued, why should I get disturbed? The poor fellow is suffering from his very childhood, it seems. And he has never found any chance and now he is almost half in his grave. If I can give him some satisfaction, there is no harm. It does mean no harm at all. However, I am puzzled why you should not, why you could not read your paper, it seems to be standing behind this old fellow. You also seem to have the same problem. And it was a fact. That man also had some problem, otherwise there was nothing to be worried about it. He, could, he should read his paper and let the old man do what he is doing. And if the young lady is not preventing him, is not even taking note of him, it is none of his business. If people can keep their own problems instead of spreading them all around and work on them meditatively in privacy, something can transform. Remember expressing them publicly, they become magnified many folds and creep. Certainly this will not help. If people can keep all their problems to their own, instead of spreading them all around and work on them meditatively in privacy, something can transform. Remember, expressing them publicly, they become manifold and certainly this will not help. Now, what this old man needs is simply a baby bottle. So, in his aloneness at night, he can suck the lukewarm milk from the bottle and enjoy. And in darkness, whether it is a nipple or just a rubber makes no difference. 
all that he needs is a small baby bottle every night so that he can die peacefully without any problem but he is throwing it on the poor woman who has nothing to do with it just keep your private problems to yourself nothing can help when you express them publicly because whatsoever you do publicly you cannot do cannot help you in any way what i am giving you is a simple method that you can do yourself very easily clean your unconsciousness and come into outside world with other people with a softer face cleaner eye and more human act so whenever the emotions arise let there be awareness express them in your privacy indeed that is the way that is the technique of transforming the negative emotions into creative force creative energies express accept them first and express them in privacy with awareness you will be refreshed once again only this much on this question of how to transform the negative emotions how to transform negative emotions <laughs>